Hello, and welcome to Denver Parks and Recreation's virtual programming. I'm Sarah, how are you all doing tonight? Uh, I wanna welcome you to Step by Step Art. So just a little thing about this class. Every week, we're gonna go ahead and be making the same picture together, everybody here at home and everything here with me. And it's gonna be a really easy step-by-step -step class so you can really follow along with no problem. Now, the wonderful thing about this class that might be different than other classes you've, you've taken like this before is that since we're all stuck at home, we don't have to worry about what the medium is gonna be. So what that means is even though today I'm gonna to be using paint, you at home can use whatever you want. So whether you wanna use color pencils, pastels, even crayons, it doesn't matter. Same thing with what you're drawing on, even if it's just a piece of computer paper, this class is gonna work for you. The only thing you have to worry about is the colors. And so as always, I encourage you for next week to just go ahead and look at the supply list online and just get an idea of what color you're gonna need. Now the reason why I chose this lovely island sunset happens to be because most of the colors are primary so for those of you joining us for the first time you don't have to worry about scrambling to get very special unique colors. So this is a great way for all of us to start this process. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into a little bit details here about the colors and what we're gonna be getting into. So if you're just joining us right now that's your cue to be able to go ahead and gather up all of your art supplies just so you have time to set up. So no rush just quite yet. So the first thing I want to do is talk about the colors that I have here in this picture. And I have put them out here on my palette here for you. So I'm going to go ahead and bring them up closer to you. As you see here, I have some red, pink, a purple, two kinds of blues. And then I'm going to go ahead and rotate up here. And I'm good. later we're going to go ahead and be using yellow, orange, a brick red, white, brown, black, and gray. And luckily, these are all very simple colors you can make out of primaries, so you don't have to worry if you don't have every single one. But if you happen to have all these, just go ahead and get them all together. Now, the one thing that I really wanna remind everybody about this is that I'm aware I have this lovely easel, I have this lovely studio, not everybody has that. You might have a roommate, a small space, maybe you have a bunch of children, I totally understand. So I really wanna encourage you to not get discouraged by the setup I have here and just use what you have at home. Um, if you wanna order something online or if you already have something, if you need to be a little bit compact, I would like to recommend watercolor pencils or oil pastels, anything like that. Those are all things you can just box up and put into a drawer. And those are all really good things that you can use, let's say if you're on a balcony or a garage, just somewhere where you're trying to get some private space. So I just wanna remind everybody before we get started, this is art and this is just supposed to be fun. And art isn't about the product, it's about the process. So you know what, we're gonna have a great time, get some drinks, get some food, and let's get started. So the reason why I chose our Island Paradise besides the color palette is because we're coming up to summer and I thought we could all use a little window out into the vacations that we're probably not gonna be taking. So if you see in here, I have a silhouette, I have a sunset, I have lots of colors and a horizon. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna first go ahead and get our building blocks for this picture. I'll be bringing this back and forth so that you can go ahead and have a reference, but if you're somebody who wants to take a screenshot of it, now is the time. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, I have here my Blank canvas. Ta-da! So, the first thing that you're gonna need, and this was on the supply list, real simple, a pencil. <clears throat> now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark up where we're gonna have each section. And the reason why we mark things up is because sometimes when we're painting, we get a little excited and we go a little crazy. So we just wanna go ahead and give ourselves a blueprint. Now, here's the tricky part. Depending on what medium you're using, it might be a little different on how dark you write on the pencil. So right now, I'm just using basic acrylics, not anything special, so darker pencil marks are probably gonna be a little bit better. But if you're using color pencils or watercolor, you might have to draw a little lighter. And if you're using the oil paints or the acrylic paints or anything like that, you're probably gonna have more of a paint over and if you're using something light like watercolor, you might have to do something more like paint in the lines. So we'll explore that and you'll figure it out, but just heads up now, best thing to always do is start off light. You can always make something darker, you can't make something lighter, all right? Now, if you look here, we have three elements in my picture and this is the best way to break it down so nobody gets overwhelmed, okay? The first thing we do is we have our sky, our second piece 
is our ocean, and our third piece is our island and tree. And the best part about that is we can break up each of those sections into smaller sections. So the first thing that we have to worry about is our sky. And it's about three sections. We have a blue area, a purplish area, and a pink reddish area. So what you're gonna go ahead and do is you're gonna take your pencil, and I'll start off right here. As you look over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw very lightly, so lightly you're not gonna be able to see, so I'm gonna bring it closer to the camera. I'm gonna go ahead and draw very lightly my horizon. So my right on my horizon probably go, hmm, probably right about here. Now that's gonna be this spot down here, your bottom half, that's gonna go ahead and have your ocean and your island base in it, and your lovely reflection of the sun. So you can kind of see it from here, right? I get a little closer, let's see if you can see it. Yeah, it's probably right around there. The reason why that I'm going a little darker is because of the oil paints, and the main reason why I wanna go ahead and mark the island is because the next thing that we're gonna do up here, we have to split our sky into three even sections. Just think of it kind of like Neapolitan ice cream, right? We have to have three separate flavors. Now I would discourage you from drawing a line all the way across because we're gonna start getting into blending and depending on how dark your materials are, if we start blending and they're not dark enough, we might still see the pencil line. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna do a marker probably here and probably here. Then I'm gonna go ahead over here on this side, try to match it. And now here's the best part about this, this does not have to be even, this does not have to be straight. This is the sky. As we know, the sky is mother nature and it's gonna do whatever we want. The beautiful thing about this is asymmetry is beautiful. It does not have to be perfect. So look at that. See that there and there? One, two, three. Three sections for the sky. We can go ahead and go over to the other side right here. One here, one here, perfect. All right, so then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna draw the tree. This is gonna be really easy as well. So I'm sitting right here, and if you look at the picture that I brought, all it is is just kind of like an upside down U. Look at that, boop, just like a sand hill. That's what I did. What do you wanna do? If you wanna change the shape of your island, you are more than welcome to. But just to keep it simple, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw my U, and it's probably gonna go, hmm, right about, there we go, I made it a little bit darker so you could see it. Uh, right there, there you go. See that right there? There's my island. Now we have to do our palm tree. Once again, palm trees go in all shapes and sizes. You do what you wanna do, but the easiest thing that I would recommend is just to go ahead and go with the swoop. Now this is important. My tree trunk right here, my base, it's not sitting on top of the island here, it's getting cut off on the side screen. So just go ahead and make sure that you start your tree off the edge of the painting and not on top of the island. That just creates a better aesthetic and it looks nicer and then you don't have to worry about trying to paint a realistic root right here. This is gonna be a beautiful artistic piece, not a realistic piece. So we wanna go ahead and just give ourselves some room to make mistakes if we have to. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm, the first thing I'm gonna do before I just draw my tree trunk, I'm gonna draw probably a little dot right in there. That's gonna be the end of my trunk. Cause you have to remember now, our leaves are gonna be going out this way, this way, this way. So we have to go ahead and leave space for all of our branches and leaves. So from down here where my island's at, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna swoop up. Now this does not have to be a perfect straight line. We're gonna paint over it or draw over it anyway, so don't worry, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm probably just gonna do a little swoop down. Now, I wanna show you what I did, because I want you to look, don't panic. If you look at mine right about here, you're gonna go ahead and see, look at that. It's so uneven, it's skinnier down here. That's okay, because that's why we're just drawing light lines. So this is your chance to go ahead and fix that, and you wanna make sure your base is bigger. There you go, your, your trunk might go ahead off top of the island, that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and make it skinnier up here. It does not have to be perfect, especially because I'm gonna be using acrylics, and a lot of my mistakes are gonna be hidden. All right. And I'm just gonna go ahead and clean that up. 
Good job, perfect. Now, I wouldn't bother too much with doing branch details because as you'll see, we'll look, we're gonna accomplish this later by just taking a skinnier paintbrush and just doing strokes. But if you're somebody that needs to see the whole picture before you can get started, a really great way to manage that is we're just gonna go ahead and give the top of our tree what I call spider legs. And that's basically just gonna be the silhouette of what we're gonna need later for the branches, kind of like the bones to the tree. So for my spider legs, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe just do something that's a little bit like that. Maybe like this, like that, like that, and then maybe two there. That's just gonna give me a sense later of where my leaves are gonna go. There you go, you can see it right there. Okay, perfect. So the first thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna do the sunset. We're gonna talk about this really quick before we go in. Just keep in mind, there's a reason why we're gonna do the sunset in this order. Blues, purples, and pinks. That is because these are all a color palette that match. And if we start dark and go light, we won't have to worry about accidentally putting a dark mark on a light mark. And then on top of that, one thing I found, especially at home, since you might only have so many brushes, you can do this entire skyline using a single brush. Because since we're using complementary colors, we can go ahead and blend and blend and go up and up and dark and dark. And you'll see what I mean? So we're gonna start. And we're not gonna go down to up. We're gonna go, oh, we're gonna go down to up, not up to down. There we go. Woo, let's get started. All right, make sure you have water if you're using acrylics. And I wanna let everybody know that I'm gonna be using different mediums throughout this series so that you can kind of see depending on what you have. And I'm gonna make a point to use things that you might have at home that might be helpful. Right, today I have some cotton balls, I have makeup wedges for you ladies, and I'm sure everybody has Q-tips, so we'll get to these later as well. So just a basic brush, and if you look at my brush right here, this is very simple. It's like a kid's Crayola brush, anybody can use it. I like to get it wet with the acrylics, because what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab our pink here, and because my brush is kind of wet, see how it's just a lot lighter, it's not as dark. We always wanna start off lighter with our acrylic paints, because they happen to dry really fast. So by adding some water to them, you go ahead and you just give it a little bit longer of a canvas life before you can no longer blend or use it, okay? So the main thing that I would just like to do is I'm just gonna draw one quick line right across my horizon. Here we go. We're gonna go, oh, look at that. Per not perfect, not better, but you know what? I love it because it's art. I'm not even gonna go back to my pink here. I'm just gonna dip my brush in a little bit more water and I'm gonna go over it again. Look at that. Since I made sure that my acrylics weren't just stiff and they were mixed with water, if you look, I'm just going up. I'm just gonna add a little bit more water. Look at that. I am getting a beautiful blend here. Now, everybody look how I'm just going down, and across, across, across clean strokes very very easy and now that i have a very light coat and i'm catching drips by because sometimes when you add more water the paint's going to get runny you're going to get some drips over here we'll just lower that up and you know what sometimes if you get a drip just take a cotton ball perfect now that we have a nice very light pink if you're gonna go ahead and look at our sample, it's a little bit redder here, which means we have to blend in some red tones. Now, there's two ways you can blend, and I'm gonna go over those with you right now. For someone out there, if you don't feel too confident in your blending skills, I would go ahead, you have your water again, and I would just go ahead and tap into this red right here. Okay, I'm getting it a little watered up down here. And if you're nervous about your blending skills, because we're doing a horizon and it's side to side motions, you could just do streaks and this is what they would look like. Water down red on the water down pink. I'm just gonna go ahead right here and do a... And I'm not going to change or rinse off this brush. I'm gonna keep the red on it. Then I'm gonna go back to the pink. Dab, dab, dab. A little bit heavier this time, less water. With the still red on it, Go back to my streak side and just, look at, I'm still doing the exact same motions. I'm gonna add a little bit more red again. Maybe the trick to this is kind of seeing 
the lines in there. Seeing the brush strokes actually gives it a nice aesthetic. And if you look closer here, always, always trying to get this camera to focus. There we go. Look at that. We have streaks going here. Really good, okay? So that is a great way to create a blended look without actually blending. Now, if you're somebody here who wants to have nice, smooth blending, I'll show you how we're gonna do that on the other side right here. Whoa! My island's trying to escape. All right, perfect. So, same thing. I'm gonna take the red, put a little bit of red on there. Now the red's gonna be a little watered down, okay? And then on this side with my watered down pink, I'm just gonna go ahead and just do very light, just like how I was doing before, okay? But now that we have all these streaks here, we wanna lose these streaks because we're blending. So I'm going to put my brush into the water, unlike this side. I have paper towels that I'm keeping on my table to kind of dab to keep from dripping. So if you wanna go ahead and do that, or a towel if, if you wanna be eco-friendly. And then with my damp brush, back to the red streaks, I'm still gonna do these back and forth, right? Back and forth. But now I'm very gently blending in the red. So I'm gonna put a little bit more red now onto the pink. There you go. And now I can take some pink, do it again. And now I wanna create a darker red tone on this side than this side. So same thing, a little bit of red, right on my brush, go to the red. And then I'm just gonna just do little dabs from the side. And now there should be enough water and enough paint in there where even though I'm doing the same motions as I was doing on this side to get the streaks, if you look at it, it's gonna go ahead and actually be a lot more blended. Look at that. Kind of creates its ombre on its own. So go ahead and decide what works best for you. And let's go ahead and finish this part of the ice cream, my Neapolitan. This is the strawberry side. That's my favorite part of the Neapolitan. So I'm gonna go ahead for this one. I'm gonna stick with the blended method. So keep in mind, if you wanna do streaks, so just go ahead and remind yourself to stop at a certain point and remind yourself with streaks, think like Vincent Van Gogh. Seeing the color definitions and seeing the brush definitions is aesthetically pleasing for your picture. So don't worry about that. Embrace it, embrace the messy. So I'm gonna come back over here on this side. I'm just gonna put some water on there because that's the example that I'm not gonna be using. There we go. Now my markers for my pencils are up here. So I've gotta go ahead and I'm gonna add water. I'm gonna go ahead and put some more pink on here. You're gonna be seeing my back as we start really getting going, okay? So if I miss a comment or anything like that, I'm not ignoring you. All right, here we go. So let's just get this pink up here. Back to my nice watery pink. My pencil marks are up here. So I'm gonna go ahead. And the best part about this sky, we've all seen a sunset. It doesn't matter if the lines are straight or not. It doesn't matter, it's okay. This is your sunset, your island paradise. Still doing pink here. There we go, nice and across. Now I'm looking at it here. I think I want it to be a little bit more red on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to our nice candy red that we have right here. We're gonna go ahead a little bit on this side. I kind of like to think of it like the red is reaching around the canvas and hugging it. So we just see the hands right here on the side. There we go, now I'm gonna go ahead and blend that in. Now, if you're somebody who's more experienced and you want to use a blending tool or you have a different method, I want you to go ahead and do it. Cotton balls are really good for that as well. I'm going to stick to the one brush just because that's a little bit user friendly and easier, especially for beginners out there who might not have access to all of the different art supplies. And I, the big thing I want everybody to take from this class is that you can use anything in your house to create something special. Perfect, I'm just gonna kinda. Now, as you add water to acrylics, you're gonna start to notice that when you make certain brush strokes, it's gonna push away the paint and you're gonna see little pockets of the canvas under it. So the important thing to remember, if you're trying to blend and hide your brush strokes, is to go all the way across and just stick to the same motion. 
I like to do the inward motion sandwich, so I work from edges to the center, edges to the center. Instead of going all the way over, I think that I like how it looks when I go like that. Perfect. So the one thing you're gonna go ahead and have to do, once we get to your end of your section and you like all your colors, we're gonna take another watery pink layer. And if you've been doing it, you probably have some extra pink right here you can use. I'm not even tapping into my little pink pile I have right here. Watery pink. I'm gonna go about mm, half an inch into the next top section. So I'm gonna start going half an inch into the chocolate section, okay? But instead of chocolate, we're gonna have purple. So let's just go ahead and get in. Now see right there how it didn't go all the way across? I didn't have enough water in my acrylic paint. So I'm gonna go back with just water. There we go. See how that's starting to be nice and pale? You can, even from this far away, you can see the difference in the tones. That is why. Now, I talked about that we can only use, you can, only, you can do this with only one brush. Here's why. Complementary colors. Next is our purple, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get this a little wet. I have my purple. I'm just gonna go ahead and dab my purple here. We're just gonna go ahead and just nah, 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 nah. I have a very watery, drippy purple right here. I just wanna show you, like, look at this. Okay, ready? So look at, it's pretty, look, it's dripping a little bit. That's how watery my purple is. This is a great blending base when it comes to acrylic paints. The acrylics I'm using here, you can get at Walmart, you can get online, they're not fancy. So just adding water can really give them a professional touch. My watery purple, I'm gonna go ahead my half inch pink up here, I'm gonna add that. Because they're both watery, if I just go back and forth like I did before, and I'm gonna move up now, because remember, our middle section is gonna be purple. Watch out for drips. And like I said, if you have a cotton ball or a tissue paper, sometimes just a little dab, a little dab, it'll cover it up. So I'm gonna take my very watery purple, and just like how I hugged the red bot on the bottom here, I'm gonna go ahead, go just a little bit back into my pink section, and I'm gonna hug the top half now. So you kind of have red hugging on the bottom and purple hugging on top. Now it's kind of watery. I think we need a little bit more purple. So now I'm just gonna grab a little bit of purple, not adding water. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna, now remember I told you how I like to work in. So from here, look at that. And you just keep going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny. And you'll start to get a really beautiful blend and some really beautiful color transitions. Now, do you see I have a drip happening? Look at that drip, all the way down there. Ah, that's okay. I'm gonna take a cotton ball, I'm gonna blend it. I can always come back to it later, not a big deal. Same thing on this side, we're just gonna do the purple. So everybody just grab your colors, that's nice and dark right there. Just kind of practice blending this pink and purple. Now, if you start to do something, and I'm actually, I'll, I'll give you an example right now. Let's say, uh, perfect. Let's say you get something like this. Oh, you did too much purple, and now there you lost your blend that you worked so hard on this side. Go ahead and just rinse off your brush, or if you have a new brush, grab a different brush. I got water. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to pink. Nice, light, very, very low amount of paint. Go to my hard line that's right here and just Basically, go across it. There you go. Look at that. Now I'm, I got back my beautiful blend. Now, as you're adding water to this paint, you might find again, like I said, that the canvas is starting to pop up, that it feels like you're, um, instead of painting, it feels like you're just moving paint around. That's normal with acrylic paint. All you have to do is just give it a second to let it dry and come back to it. Because the benefit of adding so much water to our acrylic paint means that it dries really, 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 really fast. So you can just go ahead and leave it alone for about mm, 15, 20 seconds. And when you come back, it's gonna be dry. So I find myself coming to that point where it feels like I'm just kind of smearing paint around and not adding new paint. 
So before I get frustrated and feel like I'm not accomplishing anything, I'm gonna leave it alone and let it dry. I still have a whole other part section up here to finish for my ice cream Neapolitan here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move up to that and I'll come back down after. So now we're gonna really start getting into purple purples. Your best bet, honestly, just a little bit of water and go ahead and I want you just to grab that purple, really go for it. I'm gonna go ahead and start here and I'm just gonna go whoosh, there you go, all the way. Perfect, let's get going. And remember, it's a horizon, so we wanna do horizontal strokes. Perfect. This is a lovely sunset. And look how quickly, look how quickly this starts to come together. It doesn't take much. I'm gonna keep going. Now I still have a little bit of water on my brush, just to kind of help keeping things even here. Really wanna get in there. Now my canvas has a lot of little bumps in it. You know, it's not smooth paper. So if sometimes if you have to kind of like dab the paint in to fill in the holes, that's fine. Just make sure you even it out with horizontal, stro horizontal strokes for a horizon. That's a tongue twister right there. Perfect, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry and come back to my watery blend here of pink and purple. Let's go ahead. And sometimes what I'll do is, and like I said, this is the beauty. Since we're going from light to dark, we can literally put two different colors on the same brush and it won't affect how it works, okay? And I, I'm sorry if I'm making it look too easy, but I'm sure everybody's is coming out absolutely beautiful. I'm sure you're kicking butt, Elizabeth. All right, so here we go from here and here, my pink and purple. I have pink, I have purple. I'm just gonna go ahead, and this time I'm gonna start in the center and work out. Just flick, flick, flick. Just like you're a wizard going to Hogwarts, just flick your wrist. There you go. There you go. Now, I have made a mistake, and before I cover it up, I wanna show you it so you can see what happened. Look at that, <gasps> my purple got into my pink. That's okay. I'm just gonna go back and clean off my brush this time so we're not gonna keep the colors on there. And this whole time, I am still using the same brush. This is not camera magic. Really wanna emphasize that great things can be done with very simple tools. I have some watered down pink, and because it's had so much time to dry because we've been adding the water and it dries fast, just some plain pink. We'll go ahead and cover up that purple real good. There you go. Perfect. I want to add a little bit more pink because I feel like I lost some of those colors that I was really going for. There you go. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up our purple here. Now we just have regular purple. Let's just go ahead and get in there. There we go. So just to remind you, just to give you an idea, my bottom half, my pink section, was right about here and my purple section is right about here so i have about this much of blending this whole section right here was where the two colors met and blended so if you still feel like you have too much of a straight line just go ahead dip your brush in water make sure it's not too wet so it doesn't drip and just go over that line and that's going to go ahead and start to blend out Perfect. So I'm going to keep going here because I really want to get some good purples in. Now my marker for my top half, you know, I'm coming up to it here. So just like before, if my section is going to go ahead and stop right about here, I'm going to go about a half inch, inch, half inch, inch up, water down a little bit because we're gonna seep into the top section, that's our vanilla section, just like I seeped in down here. So just a water down purple. I'm going past the lines that I drew. I am now going into the top section of our sky. We split it into three sections, one, two, three. We're now inching our way into the third section. Look at that. And I'm honestly just going back and forth, back and forth. If you're painting right now and you're not getting as much longevity out of your paint like I am, like you're painting and then it just kind of stops halfway, 
probably means you don't have enough water in it. I honestly just go ahead and I take my cup, I dip it all the way in, and look, it's just, it's dripping. You can see the drip, right? So with my drippy brush, I have a paper towel right here, and I just dab, 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 and you can see how much water I'm getting off of it, okay? That's about how damp. You should really be able to feel it on your, on your skin. It's kind of wet. That's how you really get a gauge of how wet your brush should be. So I've inched my way up into my blue section. So I have two blues. You do not need two blues. I just chose to have two blues. I have a very bright blue. Let's go, there it is, right there. Kind of like a Caribbean blue. And then I have your very standard primary basic blue, my kindergartner blue. That's what I usually call my basic colors, my kindergartner colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my kindergartner blue first, basic blue. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put some water, not too much, onto my kindergartner blue right here. See, I'm kind of dabbing on my palette. You can use paper towels for that, same thing. I have a watery blue. And now you kind of see, I've been using the same brush, so you can kind of see purples and blues seeping in there. Honestly, because we're, this is all one blended section, having these remnant colors in your brush is gonna add a professional blend look without you actually trying. So it's kind of a secret to kind of look like you have all these extra skills when honestly you're just using a dirty brush. Perfect. So my blend right here, I'm gonna go ahead, look at just back and forth and I'm going some into the empty canvas and some into the purple. Now I think I want a little bit more of a blend. Oh wait, maybe not. I may actually have put enough water. I'm gonna go a little lower, a little lower. And then as I go lower, I'll come back up and you can even kind of see my body swaying. There you go. You'll naturally start to blend. Let's add a little bit more kindergartner blue. There you go. And you're gonna to start to get a really pretty color tone. Honestly, if it's starting to look like my hair, you're doing it correctly. Let's just add a little bit more in there. Now, my, now I have some kindergartner blue. Get your kindergartner blue. I have not added any water to this, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and put that on the top half of our blend. It's gonna kind of just, see how my brush is half and half, half on the paint I already have and half on empty canvas. Perfect. But I'm still gonna keep brushing, even though there's no water on here. I'm gonna keep going back and forth. Perfect. So now you're gonna see there's a little bit of a little empty spot here. So that's, remember how we did pink and purple on one side? We're gonna do the same thing. Just a little bit of water, dab on your paper towel, and then we're gonna do kindergartner blue on one side, and then on your other side, go ahead and dip it in your purple. So I have a wet paintbrush with purple on one side, kindergartner blue on the other, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and focus on this section right here. Same thing as I did down here. Instead of going in, I'm gonna go center to out. So center, out, center, out. And I want you to see what I'm doing with my, my paintbrush. I'm going, flipping it like this. You see, you can see my Palm Pilot, I have things written on my hand. That's how I'm doing it. So both sides of the brush are giving this canvas some love. So switch, switch switch and I'm slowly going to be going all the way out. I still think it's a little too light. I want to add just like a little bit more. So kindergartner blue, purple, back to my center, giving it love. There you go, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, and then I'm gonna just kind of just try to get this whole thing even here now. And like I said, I have all these extra colors just as remnants inside my brush because I haven't cleaned it yet. And if you look closely, if you haven't done, if you haven't cleaned your brush yet all the way, you're gonna see, you're gonna start getting some beautiful color pockets. Just little bits of red here and purple and blue here. And it's gonna look like you're doing it on purpose, but you know, honestly, you just have a dirty brush. Now I'm gonna go in and do a little bit more blending. I have a plain white brush here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you. I'm gonna get a little bit closer. 
See how I'm like, just me, 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 me. But then if I go, nice big strokes. There you go. So just go ahead, I want you to take this opportunity, play with it, get the blend that you want. If you're somebody who maybe is doing streaks and you have this purple blue section right here, a really cool idea, same brush, same dirty brush, go ahead and take some pink and just go, see how I'm drawing lines? Go ahead and look at those lines. So if you're going for the streak method, that's a really good way to highlight and give your painting a little bit of depth. Now I gotta go ahead and get rid of those because I'm trying to blend, not have streaks. So if I added some pink here, I can just take some blue, top half to get rid of that, add some purple here to get rid of that, and we'll keep the pink down here because it looks good. Okay, I wanna add a little bit more blue right here. There you go, let me turn this canvas. I think you guys need to see it just a little bit better. There you go. Okay, so I've been using Kindergartner Blue this whole time. I have this beautiful, I'm gonna say Colded or Caribbean, just a really bright, vibrant blue. Same thing, I'm putting brush into water. I have this really bright blue right here and look how my blue kind of seeped into my purple. That's okay, it's all going on the same skyline. So I have, go ahead and get this nice bright blue water down. I'm dabbing, I'm dabbing, I'm adding water. No, I'm gonna go ahead and this time work top to bottom. So you wanna make sure that your top is the pure blue. So if you need to go ahead and add more paint and less water, I'm gonna go ahead and encourage you to do that. There we go. Now, personally for me on fun projects like this, I could give two toots about the side here. If you're somebody that really wants a clean side, you can go ahead and put painter's tape on the edge before you start, or go ahead and have your painting wrap around. But for me, this is just for fun, so my sides don't bother me. I am gonna add a little bit more of that blue on there. There we go, okay. I have a lot of good bright blue on there. Just look at that, you're gonna see when I add it on here. Ooh, that's nice and rich, look at that. Let's add a little bit more here. There you go. Big horizontal strokes, perfect. Now I'm gonna go all the way down here. We're just gonna take some time, it might be a little quiet. Maybe you're on the balcony maybe in your backyard, that, this is perfect. There we go. See, now I'm just trying to get all these little spots. Go ahead and fill it all in. Same thing, I'm gonna come in like I'm hugging. Now you might get some paint chunks in there, that's okay. It just kind of adds to the texture. Plus, don't forget, we're gonna be putting big palm trees and leaves over here. So you probably won't even see some of the mistakes if you have any. If you have lost your lines to your palm tree, it's okay. We'll come back to that. But if you're like me and you did darker lines because you were using darker paint, especially down here, I can still see my palm tree. I lost it a little bit up here, but that's because mostly we just drew spider legs and we can always wing it and come back. I think drawing nature is always great for anybody's first time because nature in itself is imperfect. So there is no expectation for your painting to be perfect. And okay, so I have here the kindergartner blue mixed in with some purple, and then we have the dark blue up here. And if you look, you can kind of see just by going back and forth, really created some really good strokes. And you know, we've all seen a sunset. Every time we go out and we go howl, you can kind of see we're kind of recreating those lines. So that's just, just a really easy way to do it. So I think we finished the first part of our picture. So go ahead, clean off your brushes. I'm gonna talk a little bit 
Some people might still be finishing up, so no rush. So that's that section. The next section, and I'll pull up my sample here for anybody who's trying to paint. It's gonna go ahead and be our ocean. So there's a couple colors in here that we're gonna be using, okay? We're gonna have a brick red, brown, yellow, and orange, and white. Now you're probably looking in if you see all these different tones of yellow and orange and tangerine, things like that. The colors I just listed are the colors I use. As we start blending and adding water, we're really gonna naturally create this like wonderful reflection. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my paints here and we're gonna get them started. So my sunset colors are on the bottom half. I'm gonna turn this over. Here I have my ocean and island colors. I just put a little out so that I could show you the colors in the beginning of the video and they wouldn't dry out. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my colors now. I want everybody to remember that a project like this shouldn't break the bank and I want everybody to remember to practice safety. So if you're gonna go ahead and try to order some supplies for next week, um, things like this, you can get them for a dollar fifty cents at Walmart, and you can order them online for curb pickup or get them delivered. So just remember that there's a lot of great resources to order art supplies that won't break the bank. And I have just a very basic orange, nothing is fancy. Perfect. And I'm gonna add my brick red right here. There you go. And I have a really big white here. But I'm not gonna put white yet down on here because the white is the last color that we add. So that brings me to my next point. The sunset is a great warm up because we really want to encourage a lot of blending and mixing. We're gonna have a lot of blending and mixing down here in my ocean, but if you look, we have a lot more definition. So you're gonna see very clearly the reflection of light. You can see very clearly where the ocean meets the horizon. We just have a lot more definition. So the reason why we're gonna not put all that white on and worry about it just yet is because the basic rule for any art, and just like any ladies out there when we do makeup, you wanna go ahead and do the darker colors first. Because if we make a mistake and we have white and then we have to put a dark color on, it just kind of phrase that oops we're gonna go ahead and do the light colors first and then the dark and the dark and the light that was very confusing I promise it'll make sense when we get started so first things first we have a horizon line right here I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start off with a very basic yellow now the little shadows that we have right here that kind of help highlight the beginning and end of our ocean are gonna have a lot of brown in them so the reason why I'm using yellow to go ahead and start this isn't because I'm gonna put brown on later. It's because yellow is a base for brown and it's really gonna go ahead and highlight it in a really well way. So I have my yellow, let's go ahead and grab that. Boop, call this my Bob Ross palette. Perfect, okay, and we're just gonna go ahead and go across. So very simple, here we go. Perfect, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and encourage basically what we did with the pencil, but with pen. So I have my yellow here. I'm gonna just go ahead and put it in water. Get it real, real nice and damp. And I'm gonna basically go to about here in my painting and we're gonna make an upside down Christmas tree. So think of it like this. Here's our star for our tree, right? right there. So when it's gonna be hard because I'm painting with yellow, so I'll get a little closer here if you can. I'm gonna basically do an upside down Christmas tree to show you I'm gonna turn my painting upside down. This is gonna be the best way for it to make sense for you. So I have my top of my tree here and I'm just gonna go ahead and make really big fat Christmas tree. See what I mean like that? So I'll turn it back around. And let's make our tree. Here we go. Alma, I just wanna let you know that you can go ahead and you can use color pencils, you can use crayons. The whole point of this class is that you can do whatever you want. All you have to worry about is colors. 
And I want to remind everybody that watercolor pencils, they're about mm, eight, nine dollars. You can get them on Amazon or you can even order them and have Walmart deliver them. So luckily, Walmart actually has a really good uh, art supply section, especially online through the app. It's what I use for my own children. So don't be discouraged that I'm using paint, okay? You can use whatever you want. And just a reminder, next week I'll be using a different medium before that. I might even do a project with crayons, my children's Crayola crayons, so don't worry. So there's kind of my upside down Christmas tree. Perfect. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some orange. I'm adding water, orange, orange, watery orange. And I have here my yellow lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and come back from this side again and we're gonna go in, but I'm gonna stop about there during my Christmas tree. So I'll get a little closer so you can see what I'm doing, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and start here. I'm gonna go all the way in, you know what? There we go. Let's go ahead. That'll probably help you guys. Okay, so in, stop there, here, stop there. So we're gonna go ahead, take a little bit more orange, very watered down, same thing. And we're gonna just use this paint to help highlight and shape our upside down Christmas tree. Now this is supposed to be water, so it does not need to be perfect. It's not need to be an exact cone, but if you want your island to have an exact cone, that's great too. Whatever island you want, you are the mayor of this paradise. There we go. Perfect. Now, remember, my island is right here, so I might just take orange and just go ahead and do a little whoop. There we go, look at that. Let's go ahead, come in here. Now see how I put a little bit darker paint here? So instead of adding more paint, I'm gonna add water. This is very light. This is kind of like drawing the blueprint for our tree and our sky, except we're kind of laying out what colors are supposed to go where first, and then we'll blend. We're kind of making our own paint by numbers. And if you look, it's not perfect. You can see I kind of have like patches here, things like that. Let me go ahead and just get a little focus. There we go. See, you can see the patches of white. Not perfect. All right, so first things we have to worry about is our cloud gaps that are right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take a very tiny bit of my brick red. Now here's the thing about my brick red. I still have orange on my brush from before, okay? So I'm keeping the dirty brush, but I'm not adding any water to my brick red, okay? I'm gonna go side here, and Now, see how I'm holding my brush when I do this? Just like a pencil. And how I get such straight lines is because I'm not writing like this. I have my elbows out, arm back, and I'm using my whole arm into my stroke. Think of it like if you ever play baseball, you have to throw a ball, we have to follow through, right? So using your body, you need to follow through with your strokes. Just like that. That's something that I'm doing that really helps give me straight lines. So I have a watery brush, but it's still dirty. Dip it in water. You can still see the orange and red on there. And then I'm the same thing, I'm just gonna go up. Draw one, two, three lines. Let's do it on the other side, ready? One, going down, two, go down a little bit more, three. All right, we're getting there pretty good. So I want everybody to go ahead and put a little bit more red on, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do one line across again on this side like this, arms up, one, and then we're gonna go up. I'm up here, see? So I went up. Same thing on this side, one over. And now I'm gonna go up. Perfect. Here's the fun part. I haven't added any paint. I haven't dipped this in water. Just a, whatever we have on here is what we have on here. 
I'm gonna go ahead and just come up to this side right here, and I'm just gonna go, just shake, 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 shake. There we go. Shake, shake, shake. I'm not gonna go out this way or down this way. I'm gonna stay in my red-brown section, but just having fun. I'm blurring, blur, 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 blur. Same thing on this side. Blur, 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 blur. Just shake, 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 shake. Blur, 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 blur. There you go. It does not have to be perfect. If mine isn't perfect, I can see lots of little mistakes on here. One's uneven, one might not be, that's okay. So while we're doing that, I'm gonna suggest if any of you out there only have small brushes and you need bigger brushes for bigger motions and you can't get to one, I have here, ladies, you know what these are? They're makeup wedges. A pair of scissors, we're gonna go ahead and cut it in half. So I just have a little square from a makeup wedge, right? I'm gonna go ahead just dip it in a little bit of water. Maybe you have to wring it out like a sponge. Okay, my makeup wedge, I'm gonna go ahead, and just like if I was applying a concealer, I might take a little bit of red, just a dab, and a little bit of orange, just a dab. Look at that, look at the little dabs right there, okay? And on that spot, if I didn't have a big brush, I would take my makeup wedge, same thing, just Shake, 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 there you go. And with your makeup wedges, what you can go ahead and do is, right over here, I'm gonna go ahead and just shaking, shaking. I'm do, still doing horizontal motions, but instead of big ones, I'm doing small ones. Same thing on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and do some nice, small, horizontal. And this is just a makeup sponge. You can get anywhere. If you're a teenager, mom might already have some. Same thing. Orange red. Look at that. Same, just brush, brush, brush. So I'm not even using a paintbrush right now. I'm using a makeup sponge. I'll finish this part with my makeup sponge too, just to show you that you can do something with anything. So with my makeup sponge, I'm gonna go ahead and just, just doing from the side, going in, quick, just wrist flicks like this. There you go, and I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna try to stay into this little cone shape that we've created. Just lots of wrist flicks, perfect. So I have my dirty makeup sponge right here, okay? Calm ball works too. Tissue paper works too. Also, what would also work uh, if you have any extra sponges in the sink or if you have an old sponge and you can wash it really good, that works as well. I'm gonna go ahead. Remember that purple that we use in our sky? I still have some left. So using the same red and orange makeup sponge, I'm gonna go and get that purple. There's a little purple on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the purple and do the same motions I was doing before. Wrist flicks all the way through and I'm gonna stay in this shape. So, and do the same thing on the other side and I wanna show you. Now this is because I'm using a makeup sponge. If you're using a brush, you probably will have different results. Do you see how it still, still shrieks? And you have the streaks in there for makeup. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the makeup sponge, put it in water. Make sure it's not too wet so it doesn't drip too much. And then using my makeup sponge, I'm gonna go back and just blend and shake like we were doing before. Blend and shake. Now, when you're using a makeup sponge, you're gonna get this. It was what I was talking about before. It's like you're just moving around the paint, not actually adding on. So what I like to do is leave that alone. I'm gonna blend on this side. Give it a second. Let it dry. Makeup sponges are just a little bit heavier than paintbrushes because they're meant for applying to our skin. And our skin is very absorbent, so you have to add more. Canvases like this are not absorbent. They, things drip off of them. So anything really heavy will actually cause it to run off. While makeup sponges for our skin, the whole point is to really soak it on. So just give it a second. Honestly, the whole time I've been talking here, it's probably already dry. And I wanna point out the makeup sponge that I'm using, it's still the same one I cut up. If you look, you can see all the different colors on there. So I'm gonna go back to purple. 
purple. Same thing, I'm gonna go, and I'm just gonna, now instead of going back and forth, we're gonna go back to going out and in, okay? So, more purple, out to in. Now, really important, we're not gonna go heavy. That's how you still kind of push around that paint. On this side, if I go ahead and I'm very light, you're gonna to start to get something. Now I've pushed paint away over here to make an example, so I have to go back and add more red and orange. So if you're somebody and you did that, this is how. Very light, very dab, 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 very, very light. And we're gonna go ahead and add some orange on there. There we go. So now that I'm going light, I'm getting back my color. I'm not just smearing the paint around anymore. So I have some orange on here. I'm gonna go back to my purple. There we go, and as I'm going very lightly with more purple over our red and orange, we're gonna start to create sort of a cloud that's a really easy separation between my ocean and my skyline. Now, here's another thing you can do. See over here, I'm just gonna go ahead and dab, 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 dab. You can kind of see the squares from the makeup brush. Same thing with the purple. I'm gonna go ahead and dab, 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 dab. Right, dab, 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 dab. And then, you know, what's the very first paintbrush we ever created? Our hands. So if you're somebody who had these dab, dab, dabbing, you can go ahead and just take your hands if you're comfortable. And the reason why I chose this picture is because there's so much blending and that can be rather intim intimidating. So you know how you can blend? With your fingers. Anybody can finger paint, it's the first thing that we ever did. So whether you're using dab, 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 going back and forth, using a paintbrush, you can always just go back to your hands. Just make sure you're using washable paint or you're not using anything toxic. Fingers are really good for blending if anybody out there is using pencils. So orange, brick red, same thing, I'm gonna add dash more purple. Same thing, look at that too, look at all those dabs. Ready, and I'm gonna take my finger. Here we go, just using my hands. The only thing that we have in common with every single tool, cotton balls, makeup brushes, paint brushes, fingers, is that I'm going horizontal, horizontal strokes. Honestly, if you can just uh, master which way to move your tool, it's gonna come out looking great. Now, sometimes your hand might get a little dry because you're gonna have the acrylic paint start to you know, dry up on there. Just take your finger and just dip it in the water that you were using, and it'll blend again. There you go. I think I actually need a little bit more purple on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and dip my finger in water. And you know what, not even to shoot me, just watch me. I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe it off on my apron, but my fingers are still a little damp. There we go. Perfect. Now I'm gonna go over and just do one quick cleanup. This is not mandatory for you. I'm gonna go ahead and take my brush, a little bit of water. I still have all the old colors on there. I'm not even gonna wipe it off that much. And just for my sake, I'm gonna go ahead and take this wet brush and just do some quick, nice, damp brush to around the outside of these little brown shapes that we made. And that is just gonna kinda create a nice blend. Now, if you're somebody who was going all the streaks, if you look something like this, these little streaks like that, keep them, it looks great. It's a beautiful aesthetic, kind of like Monet. So go ahead and keep those marks as well. Do whatever you wanna do to make you happy. There we go. Perfect, and if you look too, I even cut into my Christmas tree a little bit. See how I, I had a really wide base before and it kinda of got skinny and big and now it's kinda of wonky? That's actually awesome. All the mistakes that you're making are actually what's gonna kinda of make the painting look more natural. It's gonna give a more earthy tone to the ocean. 
So now that we have our two little clouds here, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the base over here. Now I'm looking at this and I, can, I wanna show you the difference right now. So if you look at my two clouds, can you see the difference? More purple, more red. So I want you to go ahead and decide what tones you wanna use, okay? I'm gonna keep this red because I wanna embrace my mistakes, but I wanna remind you that I made this other painting and this one's already coming out different. The whole point of that is art's gonna be different every time. It's not carbon copies. So let's go ahead and we're gonna get this going here. I'm gonna go ahead, dip my, I'm going back to my brush. I got orange. With my orange, I'm just gonna do some big streaks going out to in. Here we go. Out to in. Now this is the ocean. So we're just gonna have fun, fun with it. There we go. Orange, out to in. Or just go zigzag. There you go. Get it all in there. There we go, more orange. Gonna go ahead and make sure we hug my island. Orange, I'm just using orange right now. Perfect, you see I got, I went in on there, no big deal. Go ahead, keep the orange on your brush, dip it into your water, maybe damp it down a little bit. Go ahead and grow back to your brick red. So now you have kind of a watered down brick red with the orange left over on there. Same thing, out to in. I'm gonna start on the bottom and just go ahead and flick that risk. Flick, 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 add a little bit more red if you have to. Flick, flick, flick. Click, click, and then I'm just gonna go like that, back and forth on my red. I have not put my brush back in water. I have not put my brush back in paint. I'm gonna use whatever I originally had because that's how. If you have a rather thicker brush and you're going like this, you're gonna kinda get flat ends, right? So what you wanna do is have your brush and you're gonna turn, turn your brush as you go. So I'm turning, and that's how you're gonna get skinnier ends, okay? You see the difference between my, the, my end strokes? That's gonna be the difference between getting a more professional look on the bottom of your ocean. So just practice that turning. If you are a woman who wears liquid eyeliner, you'll understand exactly what I'm saying. Same thing on this side. Same, just strokes, strokes, strokes. All right, perfect. So I am gonna clean my brush now. Clean your brush or grab a new one, whichever is easier for you. Whatever you have access to. Now we'll go ahead, clean brush. We're gonna go back to just the yellow. Now look at I had just cleaned my brush and I dried it so it's not too wet. And we just wanna go ahead, we get a very light base here. So whatever shape you've gotten here, I kinda of have like a, a turnip kind of look here. I'm just gonna go ahead and just take the acrylic paint and I'm going to go over my yellow patch. Now the difference is here, we kinda of have this fade where the orange and the yellow meet, right around there. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna go all the way to the end, I'm gonna kind of stop right before I get to the end and let go. So basically, I have dark yellow in here and light yellow out there. And I'm still doing that same motion I was showing you before, going up and down and up and down. And just kind of, or honestly, just take your yellow and just go just scribble in like you're scribbling with crayon. It's no big deal. Perfect. Now, one thing I like to do with my yellow. We have our shapes, our two brown clouds right here, purple clouds, whichever ones you did. I'm gonna take the yellow on top here and just go from the center and wisp out. You wanna stop about halfway. So look at the halfway mark in your spot. And you're just gonna, then you're gonna go ahead and add water to your brush now. Don't add paint, just add water and then take your paper towel and dry it off with your damp brush. And then I'm gonna kind of go back to that Christmas tree. 
I'm just gonna follow what shape I have. We might all have different shapes. And if you want to blend it a little bit more, maybe if like right here you feel like there's just too sharp of a line, get it damp. Just, just I'm shaking it. Look at that. No rhyme or reason. That's okay. It's the beauty of this being fun. There you go. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead. Get to our island down here. Very simple. We have brown and black. Go ahead, clean off your brush. If you've already used all your purple, add purple to your palette. We're gonna go ahead and come back to purple. But here we go, I have my brown and my black. I'm just gonna mix them together here. They dried out a little bit during this, so I'm gonna have to add a little bit more. Very mucky color, super simple. Let's do our arch. Do it again. Perfect, fill it in. This is my favorite part because it's the easiest part. We're just kind of making a half coconut. Here we go. Now it's still wet. So while it's still wet, I want you to go ahead and add purple to your dirty brush. So see, I still have the brown and black, but now I've added purple to here. So same thing I just did all over again. Ready? Swoop, swoop, just fill in. There we go. Now, when you add the purple to this, it's really gonna go ahead and kind of create the silhouette vibe. It's gonna create the silhouette illusion because we have a purple skyline here. So by not just having black, having brown and purple in it, it's gonna give it an earthier feel and it's gonna really reflect how the sun and the ocean kind of give some color to the island. Now, if you see streaks in yours, that's okay. Honestly, it doesn't matter what shape your island is, as long as you like it, you like it. Perfect, I'm just gonna add a little bit more there. Still keeping, now instead of doing horizontal, I'm doing curves, great. All right, so I want you to, we're gonna come back to that. Just let that dry there for a second. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the brush that I already have. My brush is still dirty, okay? Still the same wet brush. This is a thick brush, so it's gonna be hard. I might have to switch to a smaller brush, but I can still see my tree. So let's just go ahead and do the outline. I see it here and I'm gonna go, Look at that. Now this, this is gonna be a little bit harder. Don't be discouraged because the trick to this is don't stop. If you try to go, eh, 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 you're bound to get not smooth lines. And since this is, since this is just a, um, a silhouette, we don't have to have exact detail. What's more important is the shape. So really just focus on having long, broad strokes. Do not stress about moments like this where the paint kind of comes out, just don't go back and don't touch it. Because you know, sometimes when you look in the sun, things get kind of blurry. You're just kind of recreating that look. Don't stress out about that part. I'm adding more brown and black because I need a little bit more. Just dab, dab, dab. Okay, going up. Now you might get a little bit more black on here. That's okay. Might get a little bit more brown. A little bit more purple, doesn't matter. Whatever you end up getting is what you end up getting, as long as you're having fun. If you don't have smaller paintbrushes, Q-tips are a really great way to kind of recreate that. You can get some real clean lines with Q-tips. You won't get those nice strokes that I was talking about, nice and smooth, but when you have to stay home, you gotta use what you have, and that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and a little bit more brown. There we go. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Now, really quick, down here on this island, I am gonna use a smaller paintbrush for this. But remember, you can use Q-tips or something else. We still have that white on here. Get it wet, it's 
go ahead and that white's dried out here a little bit. Same thing, very watered down white. That motion always doing that horseshoe shape. We're just gonna go ahead, maybe two or three horseshoe streaks. Watch, ready? I'm gonna start up here and probably go down to here. One, two, maybe right here, three. And if you look, they're not very clean. That's okay, I'm gonna go back with water. Just water, I'm not adding more paint to this. And just, I'm just kind of adding water, kind of like watercolors, but it's acrylics. Same, just instead of this, 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 it's gonna be this, this, this. There we go. Now, if you kind of see, we got just a nice little blend here. Make sure that your tree goes all the way to the end. Pretty simple. You can do the same thing with the tree if you want to. You can add white. We're gonna move on to the branches because we're coming close to an end here. So really, really big thing you wanna do is just kind of find the right size brush for this. You have so many different options. I know I do, but the one that I like to use the most is right over here. Look at that. Q-tips work really great too. Try that. Sometimes even toothpicks if you do it right. But I'm, this is gonna be just all black, okay? So we still have the all black up here. I'm gonna go ahead. Now here's the difference. I'm gonna go ahead and dip my brush in the paint. Stop before I start going on this canvas. Somewhere in a paper towel or empty pad over here, I'm gonna lay my brush on and I'm just gonna spin it. Just wipe off all the extras. I should have a pretty clean but fresh black brush. It's like you're trying to create a pen almost. Okay. That's right, there's no such thing as mistakes, only happy accidents. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go here. If you can see your pencil mark, that's great. If you can't, draw something new. It's a palm tree, they change all the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and start in the center. Remember how the, we were trying to be very smooth, quick motions? If you try right now, to just go really slow. Every little mistake and bump you might see, but if you just go for it, just find your muse and swoop, it doesn't matter if it's wonky, crooked up, if it's smooth, it's gonna look great. So just follow your heart. I'm gonna go down here. Here I go, ready, center, and here I go. I'm just gonna do one big swoop. Perfect, now if you look, see how it fades out? It's not perfect. It doesn't matter. Because it's smooth, it's just gonna look better. So don't worry about having everything precise. Worry about having everything quick and smooth. So we're gonna go ahead, same thing. I'm cleaning off my black so that it's not gumpy. And remember, when I say quick and smooth, I'm not talking about how it looks. I'm talking about how you move your hand. Quick and smooth. Don't worry about looks. Same thing, I'm gonna go down this way. Start from the center and just yeah, perfect. Let's see, what else are we gonna do? We'll do one going this way. Look at that, they're already coming out different shapes and sizes, but I don't think anybody here would complain. I'm gonna go out this way. All right, let's go ahead. I wanna do one going this way. Now, I'm always gonna go from the center out. I'm not gonna go top to bottom. So since I'm gonna go ahead and be going vertical, I still wanna start here and just Perfect, and we'll do one more. And I'm gonna do a short one, just to have a little bit of, you know, a little bit different little character work. Now look at, they're all different shapes and sizes. It doesn't matter, hi James. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is, we're gonna start doing our leaves. Leaves are all black, don't worry about the browns and the purples. So look at this right here. I want you to see, Basically, we're just making little upside down V's, upside down U's. And we're just gonna kind of do these little V shapes and we'll start from the center and go all the way down, kind of like a caterpillar. You can use the same brush we were using. You can use a smaller brush. You can use a Q-tip. Honestly, whatever you want, it's your palm tree. So go ahead. Take it, I'm gonna start here. Now the one thing I wanna remind you when we do this, you're gonna be tempted to have your leaves go over your trunk. Don't do that. Do palm trees do that in real life? 
Of course they do. But we're not gonna do that for the painting because we really wanna capture the silhouette. So we're gonna cheat a little bit and we're gonna make sure our leaves don't go over the trunk. So obviously my leaves would normally go this way, but in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have my leaves go down, okay? And same thing on this side, down, up, 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 up. I'm just like going in between, look at that. Not perfect. Now the reason why I did that first is just so we know where to stop. Because when we're doing palm tree leaves, we're gonna go bottom to top, right? So we drew our branches out, center out. Now we're gonna do our leaves out to center. Let me show you, I'll get real close here. This is not gonna be perfect. And also keep in mind how I'm standing. I'm gonna be kind of painting like this. It's already very difficult, so I'm not expecting this to be perfect, which just goes to show you, you shouldn't either. So we're right here, and I'm just gonna go ahead, here's the bottom of my thing, and I'm just gonna go meh, meh. And the reason why we go from the bottom is because now I can just go maybe a little bit up top and sometimes they're not even touching, that's okay. You wanna start from the out and going in because that way you know how your leaves are supposed to hug each other. Sometimes if you go the other way, you'll start to have paintings touch and it'll just, it'll just kinda of get difficult. This does not have to be perfect. I might go back, do some touch-ups. Just wisping away. Wisp, wisp, wisp. All right, let's just do the whole tree together, okay? Now, I want you to realize that I'm aware there's a lot of gaps. There's a lot of uneven leaves. Kind of looks more like a, maybe like a fish skeleton. Still doing those Vs. And on the top here, maybe just two. That's okay, because I'm gonna go back in with a smaller brush and fill it in. The main thing we wanna get right now is kind of a base. Look, it's coming together already. Let's do this one. Oh, I missed that one there. There we go. Look, at I even started going back and I was supposed to go out forward. So even now I'm making my own little changes here. Still quick and smooth, not perfect. Now I'm gonna bring this up close so you can see here in a second. All right. So why don't you guys go ahead and look at that. Look at all that space. That's not a palm tree. Look at that. What a difference. So now we're just gonna go and fill it in. This is where you can get creative. How do you wanna fill in your palm tree? What kind of palm tree do you have? I'm gonna go ahead and use this soft skinny brush. Like I said, you can keep using the same one. Don't worry about it. And now I'm just gonna start filling it in. Kind of like uh, coloring in between the lines, but I'm putting lines in between the lines. Now this is where those U shapes were really handy because you can kind of just follow that pattern. Add a little water to your black paint if you want to. You'll, that will kind of cause you to have darker lines and lighter lines. And even though that might not look really good when you're painting up close, when you take a step back, it's actually gonna really help fill in. So I'm putting water, then I'm gonna go ahead and black, then just same thing as we were doing before, just on a smaller, tinier brush. And here we go. Some of my leaves aren't even touching my branch, and I don't even know if it matters. It's supposed to be a silhouette. And we know when the sun shines on stuff, if it has lots of little pockets, the light will burst through those pockets. So when you're looking at it, it's kind of hard to see the full silhouette. So any kind of missing piece we have, we can blame on the back of the sun. Still filling in. Just look up close at that. I want you to see how it's not perfect. It's not clean. They're just brush strokes. I always kind of reminds me of olive branch leaves and old Greek paintings, just how it's kind of streaky, medieval painting, things like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're just gonna go ahead and fill this in. Some of the leaves bottoms are gonna be pointy, some will be thick. Doesn't matter. 
Here we go. Perfect. So we're gonna be coming up to the end here. So as I'm gonna go ahead and paint this, we'll talk about some stuff. I will be doing the same painting tomorrow. That class is gonna be geared more towards our 50 and older patrons, but you are more than welcome to join, especially if you wanna finish your painting with me. If you have not finished your painting, go ahead, keep going. If you were sketching or using charcoals, you might already be done. Whatever you want. I really would love if everybody wants to, if you're gonna post what you've made on Instagram or Facebook, to use the hashtag DPR Arts and Culture. And then you can see back here we have Arts and Culture, so you'll do DPR, that's Denver Parks and Rec, but you'll just do the D, the P and the R, and then Arts and Culture. We'd love to see what you've made, you know, and if you're okay with it and you allow us, we'll go ahead and share with everybody because the beautiful thing about art is that it's community. Even though we're all social distancing, and we can't be close to each other, we can all still create together. I would love to see all the things that you created. Perfect. If you have a friend that wants to do this or you've stumbled upon this and you wanna go out and get the right supplies or order the right supplies, I should say, we'll be doing the same class again tomorrow at nine in the morning. Look at that, none of that, look at that one. There are so many strokes that were incorrect right here but when you know when you take a step back maybe it looks bad maybe it doesn't it's a palm tree perfect we got to do the bottom here Boop. i'm gonna come up one more time just so you can see look at that what i'm talking about when i say it's not perfect All right, um, I would say that's about close enough. Let's go ahead and look at that here. Did you look at that? I'm gonna look up real close. I'm gonna show you, look, these are not perfect. Some of these are actually a little messy. But when we have it back up, we have a Cody Bird Island Paradise. And just to show you here, the difference between these two. Only about two days apart. Look at that. But honestly, if I saw one or the other, I wouldn't think one was better or not. Maybe you would, but everybody's a critic. So just some pro tips if you're gonna be using acrylic paint later, try to get about three or four different brushes. Make sure you have water cups, paper towels. You don't need canvas, but if you're gonna buy a sketchbook, make sure it's pretty thick. Um, next week, I'm gonna be using pastels. Mine will be oil-based, but they'll work well with chalk as well. They'll also work really well, the project we're doing, with colored pencils. And honestly, if you don't have those lying around, they're dollar ten online, very simple. So don't be discouraged. We started off with paint today, but we're gonna do so many different things, okay? So I just wanna thank everybody for coming and uh, remember, you can join us tomorrow morning. We'll be making the same thing if you want to finish it. Or if you're just joining us now, you have time to go ahead and look at the supply list and join us again tomorrow morning. And um, just, I want to encourage everybody to go ahead and check out uh, Denver Parks and Recreation's other online programming. I want you to check out Arts and Culture's online programming from, you know, we have dance classes, we have preschool classes. There's something here for everyone. Uh, don't forget, if you're gonna post your art, please use hashtag DPR, Arts and Culture. And if you wanna stay updated on more class schedules, any other extra program offerings, uh, make sure to follow uh, Denver Parks and Recreation um, here on Facebook, or go ahead and check us out on Instagram. Or as always, you can join our website at denvergov.org forward slash recreation. I hope you had a really great time today. I wanna to encourage you again to just keep doing new things and keep creating because it doesn't matter if you paint, pencils, sidewalk chalk. I'm sure it's gonna be amazing. So everybody, I hope you have a great night. I hope to hear you how tonight. Remember to stay, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay creative. Bye guys.